sharing, I welcome you to join us in a room. So, uh, I'm Rutland, and I'm going to sit here at Madan, and we are currently building a uh, Go Processors for your field. So, let's start with uh, what I mean by what, what is a Go Processor. Right? So, uh, traditionally a Go Processor is like an additional processor uh, that you most closely supplement your field processor. An example would be like a GPU for example. And uh, like it's usually uh, better at certain tasks than the CPU. Like it's either faster, cheaper, or more efficient. And you can sometimes offer entirely new capabilities. For example, uh, your phone probably has a, like, an independent network card which enables you to talk with mobile networks and stuff, which a CPU can't really do. Why the coprocessor is an additional cost? Uh, the reason why we do it is because it usually improves the performance of your system on like, the cost of the system as a well. whole. And um, like, it usually provides the ability to uh, like, customize the system. For example, if you uh, buy a desktop off the shelf, you can add additional stuff into your desktop and right? like, make it more cute. So like usually it's a predictable independent of the other components that you might have in the system. So, like, there's some examples over here. Uh, the one of the, probably again is the GPU, that's probably the most popular one. Uh, so, the one on the top left uh, is like a very old floating point processor. Uh, the days of old years, CPU couldn't really do any floating point stuff, it was like stuck on just doing integer stuff. So, we need a separate uh, chip to run the And uh, the one in the top middle is uh, what we currently have in our iPhones. Uh, it's like a secure player, but that's inside our iPhone system as well. And on the top right, you have like an audio card, uh, which augments us with like audio processing capabilities, nice like, for you to uh, plug into. And the one on the bottom left is like, is like an Ethernet card. Obviously, your CPU can't talk to the network without the Ethernet. So, what we want to provide is basically that. Uh, so the way you can be add a GPU to your system to make it faster, more efficient, and all that, we want to do that for Ethereum and like other blockchains. So, yeah. Let's answer the most important question, which is why? Um, so, the main reason is this. Uh, experience of every today sucks because smart contracts are like really expensive. And that's because the execution today is basically performed by all the validators. Right? And uh, Ethereum targets like maximum decentralization, which means it has to support hardware that's not as strong. And it also has to like uh, target common hardware that uh, anybody and everybody can use. So, and it also makes a decision to like prioritize hardware in simplicity uh, over performance. And it is not to say that these decisions are bad. The decisions are good for what Ethereum actually provides. So, yeah. The goal of Ethereum is to be like decentralized, it's to be accessible to as many people as possible. And since it's a very core infrastructure component, it has to be like ideal and have like a low surface area for parts of one. The problem here is that this basically makes Ethereum slow. You have a limited instruction set, for example. Uh, all your CPUs today probably have like instructions which are not exposed inside the game at all, and you don't have any hardware acceleration. So, let's try to re re redesign our own computer code processor that can help you find So, I have a few quotes over here. Uh, for one, all the computers basically be performed by every validator, so let's minimize the amount that needs to be done. And while doing this, I'm fine incurring the cost of that. Uh, I am factored on the co processor itself. It scales better. And obviously, I want, to, want it to be usable from the blockchain, so I need smart contract communication. And for that, I am going to make it as simple as that makes sense. So, it doesn't seem familiar to you. Because what I just described is what rule of something. So, they excel at literally one task which is quickly and cheaply uh, prove that a given set of transactions takes a blockchain from like state A to state B. And the way to minimize on chain compute is basically by shifting the burden onto a group. So your secret rollup is basically your deposit today. And a nice property is they are stackable, so you can just have rollups and rollups and rollups and stuff. But rollups still don't really work out for us because rollups are fundamentally also just smart contracts. Right? Uh, which means they are limited uh, by the same limitation that you have on the theory. Which is that you don't have a lot of capabilities today. Like you basically only access data uh, that's already on the blockchain. Uh, you can't really access data that's on like other blockchains. You can't access data from 
Or you can use your API, if you can't serve requested users, uh, you, know, you can't uh, do anything wrong in the transaction. is like uh, quite small with updates in 30 seconds. And you can't really perform any computation in private because most of the transactions are just public. So, our goal is to do so much more than that. And that's why we're building our So, let's think of what will happen. So, what if my smart contract could you know, get for internet access and possibly make API queries from the services? Right. Uh, what if I could get access to data that's another blockchain that I can process there? What, what if I could run my, write my code like us to see plus plus instead of some And what if I get a better VMs than the EVM, maybe more efficient? And how can I run servers uh, that are directly like accessible by users through the internet? Especially you know, if they are compatible with your existing browsers, which means it's just like ETFs and stuff. <laughs> and how do I support like problem security so uh, apps can make the choice for themselves? So, there's good news and bad news here. The good news is that our set does provide all of this. The bad news is it doesn't provide all of it all the time. You kind of have to pick and choose between what you want for the application. And the most basic thing that you guys probably will be picking and choosing is what is the security model that you want? So, one choice is of course ZK proofs. It's probably a uh, cryptographic proof of computation. This means it supports like a wide variety of proof systems and different readouts based on like proof sizes, proof in times, what's supported under and all this stuff. And if done well, it basically gives you privacy for free. Right? And the primary goal is of course to make a large amount of computer to achieve the verify answer. So, ZK proofs provide cryptographic security, which is the highest level you can get. But every they are like pretty expensive and like pretty slow when they're tricky. The other choice that we provide is secure enclaves. So these are uh, hardware isolated environments that uh, isolate all your code and data from minimum with like pretty just including the host that's actually running. Like it's pretty popular to build into like most new CPUs we find today. Uh, cloud providers are like the uh, exactly uh, good and like the confidential computing type. And like something we are really excited about is Echoverse is also building uh, like enclaves into GPUs now. So yeah, okay. We will probably see some applications go there as well. So, Eclipse are like much cheaper, much faster, and like they are infinitely more capable than ZK proofs. But the security you get is not from cryptography; it's from the like, application, from the hardware provider. So, depending on that, uh, depending on what your requirements are, you will probably pick one of like three paths to using Cluster. Uh, one is of course going serverless uh, using Eclipse. So this is best suited for like short tasks. Uh, you know, if you need like load it, it's like high performance. Like one example is like your usual API servers for packing and uh, You pay only for what you use because it's servers. It's all nice. And uh, you can sort of access the entire network. So that means you have access to like to APIs, RPCs, to other chains, and like full data support. The other option is do the same thing using ZK groups. So you get a better security in the form of, you, get, you just get the high, like, highest level of cryptographic security, but you kind of have to make some trade-offs over there. One major trade-off is you can't really access a let's say, data on the network, because you can't really create CK proofs for the PLS connection. You have nothing data changes that. And it's also like relatively a lot more expensive and like slower to generate a CK proof and computation than just over the place. So, that's one. And the third option for those of you who don't uh, want serverless. Serverless is just run your own servers. So this is well suited for like uh, tasks that are long running on the perpetual, so like they run forever. Uh, there's like dedicated capacity for your server uh, with like stateful execution. So uh, you know, uh, you can sort of uh, save stuff on there, save stuff in memory that you use to serve the next request, don't have to uh, do everything from scratch again. And you can definitely run anything in any language because at the end of the day, what you have is server. So, your current code will just work inside that, just like that. And you get, you get obviously the highest level of like latency and performance from this. So, yeah, there's no one size fits all. Uh, it's all a trade off based on what you want. And instead of just picking it ourselves, we believe that we should just offer it two parts. And applications are sort of free to choose uh, what works best for their use cases. So, uh, this is something that uh, people are already building on us, of children. So we have like uh, people building backends, we have some people working on like MPFS, gateways and all, uh, gateways for pocket for example. Uh, and like there's a problem working on Oracle, there's some people running MVP bots and stuff. Uh, Piaz is not using Master for the custom cryptography. 
uh, because Ethereum update does not pre compile for every reason. So, to support uh, our ZK uh, needs, we are also running a, a proof market. Uh, so, let's say you have apps that uh, need ZK proofs to be generated, but you don't really have the kind of powerful hardware or like update requirements that you need. So, we sort of have a specialized network of operators, uh, one much more efficient since they serve a lot of multiple projects. Uh, they are much faster and cheaper because they have a specialized hardware that's uh, tuned to generating ZK proofs. So, yeah, this is something uh, we are working on as well. All right. Yeah. So to wrap it up, uh, if you guys need computer apps that you want to be verifiable on chain, or you guys are probably running servers today, feel free to come speak to us. I'll show you how to do it for you. And if you guys are building something cool, obviously happy to provide the answer credits. Uh, we just launched an answer minute like a couple of months back. So yeah, if you guys want access, and yeah, that's it from my side. I think we found our uh, socials. Obviously, I'll be around the event. So if you guys want to talk to me, feel free to come and pick me. Thank you. Thank you.